next section that we're going to do is 619. And this is on the E2 reaction. This is also an elimination reaction, just like E1. And we're going to start by just showing the overall reaction like we did for E1. In this reaction, just like with E1, you need to have at least two carbon atoms. One holds a leaving group, and the, you need to have an adjacent carbon with a hydrogen atom. This will produce an alkene exactly like E1 in the loss of the leaving group and loss of the, of the hydrogen. Again, we call this the E2 mechanism. And in the E2 mechanism, we have two molecules colliding, just like SN2 is two molecules colliding. And the collision of the two molecules, two molecules collide, resulting in elimination. So instead of substitution, you end up with a different type of collision that's going to result in elimination. The E1 or the E2 and SN2 reactions don't really compete with each other like E1 and E2 because the collisions are not the same in E1 and, and in SN or sorry in E2 and SN2. The reason that SN1 and E1 are so competitive is because they both start with the exact same step formation of the carbocation by loss of the leaving group. But in E2, you need to have a collision, and if uh, the nucleophile hits in one spot, you get an SN2. If it hits in a different spot, you get the E2. And you are able to pretty well control which one you're going to get. In Chapter 6, we don't talk about how to control e E2 versus SN2. We do that in um, Chapter 7 when we're learning more about alkenes. For now, we'll just say that it doesn't compete. Not period. It there is a little bit of competition doesn't compete with SN2 in the same way or to the same extent as E1 and SN1 compete. So it's just not as bad. It still exists. It's still present. It's just not as enhanced. So, for example, the first example that we're going to do is showing you a reaction where there is E2 and SN2 competition. And we are going to use 2-bromopentane with methoxide, my favorite nucleophile. In this, when you see, again, when you see secondary alkyl halide, you don't know if it's going to be a... SN1 or SN2, because secondaries can do both, but when you see a strong nucleophile like methoxide, you know that that's going to be an SN2 mechanism, and the SN2 mechanism that you're familiar with is the nucleophile hitting the carbon and the leaving group popping off, and that produces This product, which is going to have stereochemistry, which we're not showing. We're not showing stereochemistry of the alkyl halide, so we don't know what the stereochemistry is of the final product here. It will exist if this is an R, this is an S, and vice versa. We can also have an elimination. In an elimination, in an E2 elimination reaction, the nucleophile hits a hydrogen atom adjacent to the carbon holding the leaving group. So this is the carbon holding the leaving group. Here's an adjacent carbon, and here's a bunch of hydrogens on it. Also, here's another adjacent carbon, and here's a bunch of hydrogens on it. This nucleophile is going to hit one of these hydrogen atoms, and the rest of it's going to look a lot like uh, E1. So you're going to hit one of these hydrogen atoms, 
move the carbon, hydrogen, electrons up to make a double bond, pop the leaving group off, all in one beautiful step. I want to draw it just so that it doesn't get too messy to look at with a separate molecule. I'm going to draw in these hydrogens and these hydrogens because like with E1, you can and will have abstraction at both of those sites, not simultaneously, but we're going to get here. See how that happens just all at once. The nucleophile hitting one of those protons, the carbon-hydrogen electrons moving to make a double bond, the leaving group going away so that the double bond can be formed, and you get this alkene. Another possibility is if the nucleophile hits one of those hydrogens, moves one of uh, this bond up into this spot, knocks the leaving group off, that gives us that product. And also, when you're doing the when you're doing elimination reactions, when you're doing E2 elimination reactions, you can't forget about cis and trans. So we have both of those. The double bond in this position because this bond is free to rotate. This bond is free to rotate before it becomes an alkene. You're going to end up with cis and trans whenever and wherever possible. Of these three products, this one is definitely going to be minor. And for now, we'll say that these two are the majors. In Chapter 7, you'll learn how to uh, identify which of these two isomers is the major product.